VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. We do thank you for joining us on Crosstalk today here on VCY America and would like to give a special warning to parents who may have young children nearby the radio that you may want to have them occupied in another area as we speak on some very important but sensitive material today. I'm not going to be overly graphic, but it's critical to be understanding of the times in which we live. And we're going to be talking about some of the issues that are going on that are targeting children As we discuss the topic today, the homosexual agenda exposed. I want us to have a consciousness of what is taking place in our society today. Last week on Crosstalk, I asked the question, have we been given over? In that program, I I read from Romans chapter 1, shared some scripture there, and also reviewed just some of the events that had occurred during what's been declared so-called Pride Month. Again, I remind you that God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. God's Word says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. And the first thing he lists is a proud look. So this whole concept of pride, not according to what I say, but according to what God has said, is an abomination. Within 24 hours of my doing that program last week, there was a video that went viral a video that went viral from the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. Matter of fact, the headline from CBN News says, We're coming for your children. San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus threatens to corrupt your kids. Here's their words. A disgusting music video posted to social media did not receive the response its producers were hoping to get. The San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus posted an original music video to their YouTube channel titled, A message from the gay community, even though the song appears to be tongue-in-cheek, it boasts that the LGBTQ community would convert the children of conservatives, and they are coming for them. I mean, as they, I'm going to get into the lyrics here in just a bit, but at the very beginning, they, they introduce us, as we celebrate pride and progress we've made over these years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. Now, some of the members of this gay men's chorus that released this controversial viral video in which the singers promised to corrupt your kids and convert your children, some of them, according to the Western Journal, appear to be convicted pedophiles, according to the research conducted by Western Journal. We'll get into that more as well. But I want you to hear some of the lyrics that came forth in this song. Now, we understand there's been quite a backlash to this, but, folks, that's beside the point. The issue is, is that this thing went viral as, as people began picking up on this and hearing this so-called musical message that was coming forth. The uh, words go like this. Do you think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect, but you're just frightened. But think that we're corrupt, we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked? Funny, just this once, you're correct. We'll convert your children, happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you'll barely notice it. You can keep them from disco, warn about San Francisco, make them wear pleated pants, we don't care. We'll convert your children, we'll make them tolerant and fair. At first, I didn't get why you'd be so scared of us turning your children into accepting, caring people, but I see now why you'd have a problem with that. Just like you worried they'll change their group of friends you won't approve of where they go at night to protest, or when you'll be disgusted so gross when they start learning things online that you kept far from their sight like information. We'll convert your children. Yes, we will. Reaching one and all, there's really no escaping it, even Because even Grandma likes RuPaul. And the world's getting kinder. Gen Z's gayer than grinder. Love to learn to love. Learn to vote. Face your fate. We'll convert your children. Someone's got to teach them not to hate. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. 
Your children will care about fairness and justice for others. Your children will work to convert all their sisters and brothers. Then soon we'll almost certain your kids will start converting you. The gay agenda is coming home. The gay agenda is here. Get on board in a hurry because the world always needs a bit more pride. That song coming forth, the released during so-called Pride Month, the San Francisco Gay Men's Course, Threatening to Corrupt Your Children is the headline that came from CBN News. The video drew immediate backlash from social media users, so much so that the group removed the music video from its channel, they report. The San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus has also released a statement attacking the far-right conservative media for reporting the lyrics to their song. Isn't that something? They developed the lyrics. They're proud about them. They sing it. They put it on YouTube. And then when they get exposed, they're blaming the far-right conservative media. They say it is obvious the tongue-in-cheek humor is lost on many, the statement claims in part, saying members of the chorus have faced threats of violence and they're reporting them to the police. According to some reports, before the video was pulled down, it had roughly 13,266 views, received 63 likes and 3,100 dislikes, and had 1,170 comments, most of which were deleted. According to one user who reposted the video, they stated, Is this a message of love, unity, tolerance, acceptance? I don't believe it is, and perhaps a reason why it was taken down. In my view, the message seems to have a threatening quality about it, as if they're going to force their agenda upon you, whether you agree with it or not. And as the song sings, convert your children, the user added. A concerned user also tweeted, The LGBT is finally being honest about its agenda, as sung by the San Francisco Gay Men's Course, We're Coming for Your Children. A story on Western Journal, and they conducted research. Some of the members of a gay men's chorus that released a controversial viral video in which the singers promise to corrupt your kids and convert your children appear to be con- convicted pedophiles. According to their research, the chorus roster and board of directors of the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus were apparently removed from the group's website after the, after the time these revelations became public, they report. The chorus also has an outreach program that brings the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus into elementary, middle, and high schools across the Bay Area to share a message of love, inclusivity, inclusivity, and also, they say, of strength. The article, and I'm not going to go through and list these, but they mention various names of individuals who make up the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus who have been convicted of such things as lewd or lascivious acts with a child under the age of 14. Again, I'm not going to go into those details. But it's truly troubling, as uh, even here the Post Millennial says, in honor of Pride Month this past June, the San Francisco Gay Men's Course released a song outlining how they'll convert your children. The song titled A Message from the Gay Community mocks parents that fear the push of the LGBTQ agenda in today's media with a song claiming that parents wouldn't be able to protect their kids from the advances and ideas of the group. Again, they're saying, we'll convert your children happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. You can keep them from disco, warn about San Francisco, make them wear pleated pants, but we don't care. We'll convert your children. We'll make them tolerant and fair. The group also chants in a frenzy, we're coming for them. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. Very interesting indeed. The Western Journal also reports that uh, there was a rush to cover up the pedophile accusations that... uh, had been listed here by the uh, Western Journal. We'll get more into that in just a bit, but I want you to hear another piece. Because we have long talked about how children are being targeted by the LGBTQ plus agenda, the homosexual agenda. That children are being targeted. And one of the ways they've been targeted is through Drag Queen Story Hours. I'm going to air for you a clip that we aired some time ago here on Crosstalk, but this is of a drag queen, self-proclaimed drag queen, Dylan Pontiff, September 17th of the year 2018, testifying on the drag queen story hours, and you're going to hear from his own lips how they're there to groom children. Listen in. 
Hi, my name is Dylan Pontiff. I'm actually going to be one of the drag queens reading for Drag Queen Storytime. So, apparently to a lot of people in this room, I'm the big boogeyman. And as you can see, I'm probably the most unintimidating person you've ever seen in your entire life. Um, I decided to do this event whenever it was introduced because I have nieces and nephews that I love very much. And I am a person that has been through a lot in their lives. I've been bullied most of my life for being a gay male, being not necessarily what the typical man is. And I thought that this event could be something that shows people and shows children, especially at that age, that understanding that people are different than you doesn't necessarily make them unnormal or makes them not good. And I think that what's truly sad is that once I was announced as the person reading, the amount of hate that I received because of this resolution that is been presented to this board, um, I've been called an it, I've been called disgusting, um, and I don't think any of these people know me well enough to say any of those things, but I think that the true misunderstanding of what this event is supposed to be and what me dressing up in drag for it is going to be. I am not there to push any kind of agenda. I was told at the library council meeting last night that I'm pushing the trans agenda. I'm pushing an overly sexualized agenda, and that is furthest from the truth. I am just as talented as a singer or a dancer or anyone that has a special talent. It just mine is dressing up as a woman and entertaining a crowd. Now, everywhere you can go, you can see that people can change their views for certain audiences. Just as much as someone can be an actor and uh, be in an actor movie for a rated R movie and they can go around and be in a G-rated movie, I can go and entertain, entertain an adults in a club, but also entertain a group of students and young children. I'm able to do that because I'm an adult and I know how to filter myself. And I just think that it is implorable of some of the opinions that I've seen and some of the looks I received here tonight. The eyes that people give you whenever they think that you are the one that's in support of this event is truly disgusting. And I am not here to obviously change anyone's views about me. But I'm here to let you know that this event is something that's going to be very beautiful. And for the children and the people that support it are going to realize that this is going to be the grooming of the next generation. We are trying to groom the next generation to not see the way that they just did. And just because I said that, you heard the little plore of people behind me. It's disgusting. We are trying to teach people to be tolerable, to be patient, to be loving. And the fact of the matter is that I'm standing right here and there's probably 50 people behind me looking at me with daggers, wishing that I would probably die in a car wreck whenever I leave here. It's truly implorable. And that is what we're trying to do with Drag Queen Storytime. We're trying to raise people to be loving and caring individuals. And I really hope that this event is going to do that for not only just the children at this event, but children in the future. Thank you. Did you catch that? We are grooming the next generation. This is from a self-proclaimed drag queen testifying before a committee wanting to bring in drag queen story hours. And then you couple this, folks, with uh, even this the song from the drag queen uh, or the gay men's course out of San Francisco. And just uh, uh, the the Western Journal reported that using the Wayback Machine, the Western Journal obtained the apparently scrubbed list of chorus members and cross-referenced those names with a database of registered sex offenders in California. While the matches could be coincidental, some offenders may just happen to have the same names as members of the choir. But also they report they unearth some uh, credible matches as well. We'll have more on this topic after the break. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, where do secular scientists say the universe came from? You know, Chris, it sometimes tickles me when evolutionary scientists mock creation thinking for claiming that creation was ex nihilo or out of nothing. But then they turn around and talk about the Big Bang when a single speck of matter exploded to form all the stars and galaxies and planets and people. But, you might ask, where did that speck come from? Some scientists now say it appeared out of nothing as a quantum fluctuation in a vacuum. In other words, matter appeared from nothing, and then it exploded. Which would you rather believe, evolution ex nihilo or creation ex nihilo? At least in creation, we have a God that is powerful enough to accomplish the job. And that's the back-to-Genesis perspective. 
To learn more about creation, get our free DVD called That's a Fact. Call us at 800-628-7640 and mention the promo code FACT. You're listening to Crosstalk on BCY America, and we're talking about, yes, the homosexual agenda exposed. Children are being targeted. We see that with the uh, gay men's course as they are coming after children, and we're going to indoctrinate your children. That is uh, very obvious there. And I also uh, found it very interesting that uh, just uh, earlier today, saw an article that uh, actually came out uh, uh, yesterday from the Daily Wire. Students in Wisconsin school district have access to a slew of sexually explicit books via their school-provided computers, including content that dubs traditional views of marriage as being, quote, ignorant. According to the Daily Wire, Elmbrook School District offers students access to books and information via an online library called Sora, S-O-R-A. The Sora database, which can be accessed by students as young as eight years old, includes books such as This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson and also the book called Queer. The Book is Gay offers a play-by-play of how to uh, use uh, uh, sex apps. I'm not going to mention them. And uh, then they, but they describe how they work where you upload a tiny picture of yourself. The app works out your location. The app tells you who the nearest homosexuals are. You then get to chat with them. And because you're near, it's easy to meet up with them. What is this doing on access to uh, student computers? Another one called Queer, which parents dub sexually explicit. I'm not going to go into the details. I don't want to read these things on the air. But young people having access, young people are being targeted by them. From the New American, when the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir recently saying, we'll convert your children, we're coming for them. It was just a blunter form of a very old sentiment and scheme. After all, in 1989, already in their book, After the Ball, homosexual activists Marshall Kirk and Hunter Matson called for a conversion of the average American's emotions, mind, and will on homosexual behavior through a planned psychological attack in the form of propaganda fed to the nation via the media. In other words, a minuscule but radical and activist segment of the population is determining what the minds of the vast majority of America's children, those allowed to watch mainstream TV, will be fed. And folks, the feeding frenzy is going on. It is going on. Here is the uh, headline from WND.com, July 6, How Queer Creators Pushed LGBT Agenda in Kids' Cartoons. The LGBT characters and themes in children's animated television programs that have emerged over the past decade is not an organic cultural phenomenon, according to a report by Business Insider. It's a result of queer creators promoting the LGBT agenda to major entertainment networks, writers, and producers. The report said uh, that a uh, gender-fluid writer for the show, Steven Universe Future, told Insider that the lead producer, Rebecca Sugar, is a non-binary bisexual. Sugar searches for inclusive talent on Twitter and Tumblr rather than through traditional hiring avenues. And uh, goes on to explain more of that. Breitbart News noted that the gay activist group GLAAD has convinced Hollywood to increase LGBT representations in shows and network on networks like Nickelodeon, PBS, and Cartoon Network. Breitbart reported a 222% increase in LGBT characters and stories between 2017 and 2019 alone. A review of the content found 259 gay characters in cartoons and TV series aimed at children aimed at children. As uh, CBN has reported, even though only 5.6% of U.S. adults identify as, and that number has increased, uh, 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 lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, according to a Gallup poll in February, the push by LGBTQ creatives to normalize the homosexual and transgender lifestyle to the entire younger audience continues. It's coming under the guise of family entertainment. Now, friends, holding in my hands right now, we're going to go back to yesteryear. I have in my hands a copy of the congressional record from July 27th, 1987. 1987. I'm reading from page uh, 21,194 and page 21,195. 
We plan to post a link to this uh, with our crosstalk right up later today. We should be out there in within a couple hours. But this is a entry into the congressional record from the Honorable William E. Dannenmeyer from the state of California, House of Representatives, state of California. Mr. Dannenmeyer said this, Mr. Speaker, since the 1960s and the beginning of the sexual revolution, homosexuals have been striving to change American culture. These normophobes demand that the average American view their aberrant behavior as equal to heterosexuality. They relentlessly seek acceptability and legitimacy. In fact, the homosexual American dream would be to amend the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to include sexual preferences to the list of non-discriminatory characteristics such as race, creed, and color. Folks, that's exactly what has happened. Senator uh, uh, Congressman Dannemeyer predicted this back in 1987. He goes on to say, but Mr. Speaker, those Americans who believe in the notion of live live and let live, as it applies here, should be aware of the militant nature of the homosexual movement. I commend the following article to the American public so they can read for themselves the extent of homosexual militancy. I commend this article not because I necessarily believe that these threats would be carried out, but mostly because this published article represents the nefariousness of the homosexual mind. Fortunately, Americans overwhelmingly view homosexuality in the moral and spiritual abyss abyss, uh, in which it exists. I, for one, will never cease to affirm the heterosexual lifestyle as the only lifestyle able to sustain the human race. And then he prints the article. Now, the article that he had added to the congressional uh, record, and again, uh, you can check it out for yourself. The Congressional Record, July 27, 1987, pages 21,194 and 21,195. In that uh, record, after Mr. Dannemeyer made those comments, he then had printed the essay by Michael Swift, who has been called a so-called gay revolutionary. This is right from the congressional record. We understand that it was first printed in the Gay Community News in 1987, earlier that year. This essay, and I'm going to read, is um, this essay is outre, madness, a tragic, cruel fantasy, an eruption of inner rage, or how the oppressed desperately dream of being this, the oppressor. Now, friends, they say this was nothing more than satire. I'm going to read it, and you tell me whether this is coming to fruition today or not. Here, and I'm reading this quote, I'm reading directly from the congressional record here, Michael Swift, gay revolutionary who wrote, We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in your all-male clubs, in your houses of Congress, wherever men are with men together, your sons shall become our minions and do our bidding. They will be recast in our image. They will come to crave and adore us. Women, you cry for freedom. You say you are no longer satisfied with men. They make you unhappy. We connoisseurs of the masculine face, the masculine physique, shall take young men from you then. We will amuse them. We will instruct them. We will embrace them when they weep. Women, you say you wish to live with each other instead of with men? Then go and be with each other. We shall give you men, your men, pleasures they have never known because we are foremost men too, and only one man knows how to please, truly please another man. Only one man can understand with depth and feeling the mind and body of another man. All laws banning homosexual activity will be revoked. Instead, legislation shall be passed which engenders love between men. All homosexuals must stand together as brothers. We must be united artistically, philosophically, socially, politically, and financially. We will triumph only when we present a common face to the vicious heterosexual enemy. If you dare to cry faggot, fairy, queer at us, we will stab you in your cowardly hearts and defile your dead, puny bodies. We shall write poems of love between men. We shall stage plays in which men openly caress men. We shall make films about the love between heroic men, which will replace the cheap, superficial, sentimental, insipid, juvenile, heterosexual, and fatuous presently dominating your cinema screens. 
We shall sculpt statues of beautiful young men of bold athletes which will be placed in your parks, your squares, your plazas. The museums of the world will be filled only with, with paintings of graceful naked lads. Our writers and artists will make love between men fashionable. We will succeed because we are adept at, at uh, setting styles. We will eliminate heterosexual liaisons through the usage of the devices of wit and ridicule, devices which we are skilled in employing. We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar, bourgeois, heterosexual figures figures that you assume them to be. We are everywhere. We have infiltrated your ranks. Be careful when you speak on homosexuals because we are always among you. We may be sitting across the desk from you. We may be sleeping in the same bed with you. There will be no compromises. We are not middle-class weaklings, highly intelligent. We are natural aristocrats of the human race, and steely-minded aristocrats never settle for less. Those who oppose us will be exiled. We shall raise vast private armies uh, to defeat you. We shall conquer the world because warriors inspired by and banded together by homosexual love and honor are invincible, as were the ancient Greek soldiers. The family unit, spawning ground of lies, betrayals, mediocrity, hypocrisy, and violence, will be abolished. Hear that, folks? The family unit, which spawns spawning grounds of lies, betrayals, mediocrity, hypocrisy, and violence, will be abolished. The family unit, which only dampens imagination and curbs free will, must be eliminated. Perfect boys will be conceived and grown in the genetic laboratory. They will be bonded together in communal setting under the control and instruction of homosexual savants. All churches who condemn us will be closed. Our only gods are handsome young men. We adhere to a cult of beauty, moral and aesthetic. All that is ugly and vulgar and banal, uh, banal will be annihilated. Since we are alienated from middle-class heterosexual conventions, we are free to live our lives according to the dictates of the pure imaginations. For us, too much is not enough. The exquisite society to emerge will be governed by an elite comprised of gay poets. One of the major requirements for a position of power in the new society of homoeroticism will be indulgence in the Greek passion. Any man contaminated with heterosexual lust will be automatically barred from a position of influence. All males who insist on remaining stupidly heterosexual will be tried in homosexual courts of justice and will become invisible men. We shall rewrite history. History filled and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. We shall portray the homosexuality of the great leaders and thinkers who have shaped the world. We will demonstrate that homosexuality and intelligence and imagination are in, uh, inextricably linked and that homosexuality is a requirement for true nobility, true beauty in a man. We shall be victorious because we are fueled with the ferocious bitterness of the oppressed who have forced to play seemingly bit parts in your dumb heterosexual shows throughout the ages. We, too, are capable of firing guns and manning the barricades of the ultimate revolution. And then, folks, listen as this essay is finished by Michael Swift, the so-called gay revolutionary. It finishes by saying this, Tremble here to swine when we appear before you without our mask. The homosexual activists outlining this from the congressional record is, is uh, the Honorable William Dannemeyer read this into the record or, or exhibited into the record here, folks. The homosexual agenda is exposed. The target is your children. Back in a minute, you're listening to Crosstalk. The film, Unidentified, tells the story of two reporters tasked with getting the answers to the claims of UFO sightings. One reporter is an antagonist toward Christianity, the other a Christian who is challenged on his beliefs. I'm asking an honest question here, and according to the guru, the Bible says you have to receive Jesus in your life, so either you've done it or you haven't, so which is it, heaven or hell? Come on, Keith, heaven or hell? Answer the question, heaven or hell? I don't know. But I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. 
Be challenged by the Rich Cristiano film, Unidentified. Available on DVD for a donation of $12 to VCY America. Additional copies to the same address are available for a donation of just $8 more. For your copies of Unidentified, call 1-800-729-9829. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. And uh, friends, uh, the homosexual agenda exposed. Uh, children are the targets. And um, we're just giving you case after case on this. I, I remember when this came out uh, back in the uh, late 80s. And matter of fact, uh, Vic Eliason uh, had read this uh, article by Michael Swift. Uh, we understand it had been printed in gay community news and shared this. And, and of course, all every Yeah, that's just satire. Just satire. Never going to happen. It's just kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, approach to this issue. But, friends, how much of this has come into fruition at this point? The hatred toward church. I mean, here, all churches who condemn us will be closed. I mean, we saw that. We're going to rewrite history. History filled with and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. Uh, writing poems of love, uh, talking about uh, what will be going on within the schools and locker rooms and sports arenas and gymnasiums and locker rooms. Friends, we're seeing all of this come into fruition. It's not tongue-in-cheek. It's been the goal from the beginning. And uh, also we have seen it exhibited, most recently, the San Francisco uh, community, the, the gay course, Put it in words, which I read the lyrics to the song earlier in the program here today, has reignited this whole issue that is going on. And then we see also the the matter of what's going on with the the increase of LGBTQ characters within uh, cartoons and programs indoctrinating uh, young people today. We see what's happening with the access young people are having with their electronic devices at the schools. And then also from WND.com, On July 12th, we find this headline that should shock many as well. Medical Ethics Journal says don't let moms and dads stop their kids from having sex change. They say that parents should lose their veto power over most transition-related pediatric care. Moms and dads, you don't have a say. The article says it should be children, not the parents, who decide whether or not to undergo life-changing transgender treatment and surgery, contends an article in the prominent Journal of Medical Ethics. Author Maura Priest, a candidate professor at Arizona State University, wrote that parents who don't want their children to transition should lose veto power over most transition-related pediatric care, Breitbart News reported. A child who is determined by a health professional to be informed and competent should have the right to make that decision. Let these things sink in, folks, as to where we're heading the society today. I, this comes just a week ago as I asked the question on Crosstalk. Have we been given over? And so much has transpired since that last week has, has taken place. And friends... Whatever state you are in at this point, I want you to know that there's a God who loves and cares for you. He sent his son to die on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins on the cross. There is no sin too great that God cannot forgive. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And we're told, even as outlined in in 1 Corinthians, uh, those who espouse various lifestyles and are known by their sins... The passage goes on to say that such were some of you. There is hope, there is help, there is healing, there's forgiveness that's found in Jesus Christ. God did not make you that way. But we know what the agenda is. It is that of recruitment. It is recruitment. It is that of grooming the next generation, even as the drag queen testified before a public hearing. They are grooming the next generation. We saw this outlined as Congressman Dannenmeyer put this forth in the congressional record in 1987. And we're bringing it back to you here today. We see also, as this has been exhibited through the 
a San Francisco gay men's course threatening to corrupt, to convert your kids. We're coming for your children. I mean, we saw that taking place, and perhaps those lyrics have new meaning to you now because we're seeing a fulfillment of what transpired uh, even here from the, from the congressional record, and we see what the goal is, is to corrupt your kid. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children, for your children. I'd like to open our phone lines and get your reaction to these things here today. Friends, we have so s- strayed from God's Word, the Bible. We must return to His Word our phone number to Crosstalk is 800-733-9829. 800-733-9829. And again, God has a story of love and forgiveness that's found through Jesus Christ. One does not need to stay uh, in uh, the state of, of, of uh, delusion whereby one thinks they're, they're somebody else than whom they are. I mean, uh, we see that so much happening with the transgender movement today. We also are finding those who are uh, just burning lust one for another, and the Bible says such were some of you. There is hope and healing and forgiveness that's found in Jesus Christ. So as this agenda is exposed and the community gay men's chorus uh, sings their songs, and I think it's time for us to, to wise up to see where this is going. And it's coming from so many different levels in society. It's coming through the educational system. It's coming through the uh, college system, university system across the nation. It's being indoctrinated even in our military today. It's coming on the uh, guise of network television and the cartoon network and PBS kids and so forth as a means to influence your children. So the number to cross talk, 800-733-9829. Craig is calling from Tucson, Arizona. Craig, you're on the air. God bless you, and thank you for taking the call. This program is of enormous importance. Um, uh, Until I came to Tucson, I was with a group called the Mass Resistance, started in Massachusetts, it's now international. Have Have you followed the Mass Resistance group that tries to get out the truth of this whole issue. Have you followed that group? They have been uh, interviewed here on Crosstalk before, Brian Kamenker in particular. Okay, I, 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 could you repeat that? I didn't hear you. I said yes, they have been interviewed here on Crosstalk previous. Yeah, yeah. Brian Kamenker, he is mm-hmm. an Orthodox, he's an Orthodox Jew, but just a handful of us started it up, and, and you know, uh, a, a recent publication by Mass Resistance is called The Health Risks of Gay Sex. And if you don't have that book, it's worth getting. It's a compendium of research, all true research articles on just what happens um, when you engage in something that is, you know, out of line with God's plumb line. Yeah. And th- the most loving thing we could do to help that person who's the drag queen reader or whatever, is to introduce them to the truth. That's not hate, that's love. Yeah. Because that means... Hello, Craig. Okay, it looks like we lost connection with Craig there, out of Tucson. Uh, let's go to Superior, Wisconsin. Jeff, you're on the air. Hi, well, thanks for taking my call. I wanted to share my story. I was actually a, uh, considered myself a gay man when I was in my mid-20s. And I was in a relationship, moved to Chicago, and then I, uh, I actually got involved with the Green Bay Packer organization. And Reggie White was, you know, a preacher talking about transforming homosexuals. And I listened, and I uh, got a letter from his wife and everything. So I left, and I honestly think that his ministry, Reggie White's ministry, helped me change. Hmm. Praise the Lord, so, through the power yeah. of the gospel. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, let's go to Kentucky. Ronnie, you're on the air. Hello, Ronnie. Yes, yes sir. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Ronnie. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you taking my call. Uh, we're definitely uh, definitely in the end time. And, uh, you know, the Bible said they would give heed, people would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in, this, in the end time that we're living. And truly, it's, it's what we see. I have a... Uh, second cousin 
that uh, has had a sex change. Uh, she was born a girl, and uh, my first cousin, she has been, she's just all tore up, really crying, and and she says I had a girl, but it, and and this. You know, it, the spirit's got a hold of her, and um, she has uh, had a sex change and even grew a beard and, and married a, another woman, you know, and it, it's just it's just really sick and perverted in this hour that we're living. The Bible said it that was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, which all these things in the book of Genesis and, you know, that we're seeing, you know, we're... These are signs of the end time, and we need to wake up, and people need to be proclaiming the Word of God and, and standing for the Word of God, because if they don't, you know, it, it, these spirits are, are loose in the land. And I just appreciate you sharing, uh, letting me share that with you. And just, uh, I know Jesus died for, for all, but we have to repent and mm-hmm. turn from those ways, and yes. we just need to wake up and uh, realize what, what's going on. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, Scott in Crossville, Tennessee, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, this is Scottish. I uh, appreciate the conversation. Uh, I wanted to address something that I think is, is almost never brought up, and that's uh, the fact that uh, how, how can someone control your children or you for that matter? So I was, I was going to point out that if a contract is not voluntary, that's slavery. Um, and so when we worry about and what, what, what are they really capable of doing to your kids, you know, unless they have access. And the access comes through government, really. Otherwise, where, where would it come from? They're, they're going to uh, deal with public policy. Well, public policy is it, you're involved by contract through your birth certificate, through your, you know, when you're born. That's, that's U.S. citizenship is not just innate. You, uh, you apply for it. And so I, I no longer live as a yeah. U.S. citizen. Yeah, if no, I did well, have no, kids, no, yeah, it Scott, would be my property. Yeah, okay. And uh, you know you're taking this another whole direction, which we don't care to go here today. But uh, one is a U.S. citizen by being born here on U.S. soil. But, uh, but the issue here is you're talking about access. Yes, there is access that is given by, uh, by the government, by the education system, uh, by media. Uh, the access coming in many, many different uh, forms. And uh, certainly, uh, as Scripture tells us, to bring our children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so I want to make that point. Uh, we're not going the other direction here. We're not going to steer this conversation differently, but uh, thank you for taking time to call. Chester is next. Salem, West Virginia, you're on the air. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I, I wanted to bring up what you almost brought up a while ago. The Word of God said to train up a child in the way you'd have it to go. Mm-hmm. And when he got older, he wouldn't depart from it. Uh, we as parents wouldn't have to worry about other people influencing our children if we would bring them up the way they need brought up. And as far as everything that's going on, everything you've mentioned, uh, there's nothing really we can do to stop the Word of God from being fulfilled. The only thing we as people can do is get our homes in line and get our hearts in line with the Word of God so that we can stand whatever comes our way. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you for your call here, Chester. We're going to be up against a break here in just a couple seconds. And uh, indeed, we are called to be salt. We are called to be light uh, in this time in which we live. And uh, just as the prophets of old, uh, we need to declare God's word. We need to declare, thus saith the Lord. And I believe that's so important for us today. And as parents, we cannot just, uh, you know, throw our children into this world without guidance. So we need to give them that guidance uh, that is so important. Deuteronomy chapter 6 has much to say on that very issue. Back in one minute, you're listening to Crosstalk. For the Worldview Report, I'm Brandon House. Our website is worldviewreport.com. Persecution around the world has been growing, but now it has reached the Western cultures. It's reached Canada and America in growing numbers. A recent report titled, Canada Has Become the Church Burning Center of the World. Well, my friends, this report tells us that at least 23 attacks have been leveled against churches, including at least five completely destroyed by fires. And according to one report, Canada's leaders, well, some of them 
are encouraging it. The head of British Columbia Civil Liberties Association, who claims to you know defend civil liberties, reportedly tweeted on June 30th, quote, burn it all down, in quote. There's other articles and other reports coming from those inside the Canadian government that this is actually being encouraged. Persecution. The Bible says it would come. Why should it be shocked? Again, a word to mom and dad about being engaged with their children uh, in Deuteronomy, talking about, you know, engaging them. uh, Talk about love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And, you know, talk of these things when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down at night, when you get up in the morning. uh, Throughout uh, the course of the day is is bringing before them biblical truth, who God is, to give them biblical instruction. Don't send them to church. Take them with you. On and on that list goes, and uh, so critically important for such a time as this. We're going next to uh, Michelle, who is calling in from Cable, Wisconsin. Michelle, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm driving in my car, so I apologize if it's a little echoey. But what I wanted to explain is um, the in, uh, working in the health field and health field and in pediatrics. Um, children don't have a choice in regards to how they're feeling. I mean, I've seen five and six year olds um, not wanting to be like this. Who would choose to be like? liking another sex person because of the, I mean, it's not a choice. I mean, it, it, that children are born that way. And um, just a decade ago, parents would um, put these children in camps, teenagers, um, trying to conform them, a very religious kind of camp. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them committed suicide because of it. M- uh, Michelle, there are many who are committing any- suicide when they take on the 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 disguise of being uh, something that they are not. I mean, one is male or female, and if you're in a nursing career, you know that we're either of XX or XY chromosome, correct? No, actually, um, oh, we're not. Um, every fetus, every uh, fetus is um, actually female. That's why men have nipples, and, and that's why you cannot. I, I, I'm I'm sorry, but but uh, you've got to go back to science class. Indeed, that either one is XX or XY. We are not all female, and and that is determined. Uh, one's maleness or femaleness is determined at conception itself, and that's critical to know. We are not born in any way other than how we are born uh, chromosomally, and it's critically important for us to understand that, uh, that there is a choice. If if there's not a choice, then why, how is it that, that there people are coming out of uh, transsexuality, that are converting back from homosexuality, saying, no, God did not make me that way? We are seeing that happen over and over, Michelle, that, that there are there are many many people that are that give testimony on how they were following a transgender lifestyle and recognize that they did it for affirmation. Uh, they did it because uh, that certainly was the trend that was going on. But it is not the way that they were. You know, how does a five-year-old be in, uh, confused of their sexuality already? It, oh, it's happening all the time. Yes. Well, it is being chosen, and we are seeing that happen uh, uh, within our system here today. And we are constantly displaying drag queen story hours before children. The indoctrination is happening uh, preschool years, and it's it's important to understand that the indoctrination is happening through PBS Kids and through the Cartoon Network, etc. Thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, on the issue. Mark is next in Kentucky. You're on the air. Hello, Mark. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Uh, yes, this is Mark. How are you today? Uh, quickly with your comments. We're almost out of time, Mark. Well, my comment is is that when I was uh, about four years old, my parents put me in a daycare center where a man who I guess was a homosexual got a hold of me, uh, raped me, and uh, almost beat me to death and just about destroyed my life. But due to God and Jesus Christ, I survived. And I have been able to live to the age of 56, and I'm extremely grateful for what's in that Bible. Hmm. That's what I want to say. Okay. Thank you, Mark. And um, I, don't, I don't know, you know, exactly what this man had been into or what was going on with him or his past, but uh, obviously I believe he was a homosexual and he liked little boys. And uh, beat me, strangled me, and just about killed me, but I lived through it, and that's why I called. Thank you, Mark. Robert in Apple Valley, California, you're on the air. 
Uh, God bless you, Jim. Thank you for your program. You know, uh, this is these men have defiantly stuck their finger in the eye of God, and they believe that they can stand and do anything and everything in the eyes of a holy and righteous God. Yes, God is loving and compassion and can heal and save anybody. But when you defiantly stand up and and, and uh, proclaim yourself more higher than God and, and going to set your agenda against the things of God, then they must be prepared for the consequences. We do want to do what we can to reach out to them, but also as men of God, we must stand up. The men of God and the pastors, we need to begin to stand up, make our voices heard, come against these things and let them know where we stand also. And we need to begin to uh, take a stand against some of the things that are promoting this and let them know we will not just sit back and allow this to go on. Mm. It's time for men of God to stand up. We're sitting back on our hands and saying nothing, praying and waiting for God to do everything when he tells us to occupy until he comes back. Mm. And it's time for us to take a verbal and a, uh, a stand that is noticeable and let them know that's it. This is poisoning our children. Thank this you. is affecting our families, yes. and it's time for us to take a stand for the Most High God against these reprobates. Thank you, Robert, uh, for your call here from Apple Valley, California. I, I just uh, also came across this uh, from the uh, oh, American College of Pediatricians to our health care worker that called in just a bit ago saying uh, there's sound evidence that children exposed to the homosexual lifestyle may be increased risk for emotional, mental, and even physical harm. Aren't some of those uh, matters being pointed out? Over 30 years of research confirms children fare best when reared by their two biological parents in a loving, low-conflict marriage. Uh, this is seven pages long. I've got two minutes left. Don't have time to read it. But uh, you'll find it at uh, ACPEDS. That's the American College of Pediatricians. Uh, we've got uh, Janice calling in from Sullivan, Wisconsin. You're on the air. Hi. Um, I have a son who is 40 years old, and next month he is going to have the surgery to be transgender, so a woman. And uh, he says that um, I'm going to, she says, you're going to have a daughter soon. And I'm struggling with that because I know that it is wrong, and I've been trying to talked to him biblically through the Bible, and I told him that God is more important with your soul, because your soul lives on an eternity. This body we have dies, so what's more important is our soul and not our body. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Janice, uh, we're in our final 30 seconds. My closing music is already playing here, but... uh, Uh, No matter what he does to his body, he's still always going to be a male. And uh, to simply go back even to Genesis chapter 1, where God made them male and female, male and female created he them. I'd encourage you, if uh, you're able to, to get together with your pastor and uh, get some biblical counsel there as well. God bless you. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the Internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.